Oh my gosh, it's BB-8. <laughs> Everyone, it's Noam here from Tested at Silicon 2022. And I want to introduce y'all to Sai and Chris, who brought their BB-8. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. We're really happy to be here. Oh my gosh, uh, this is so amazing. Uh, this is a collaboration between you two that you've been working on for years now. Um, and you've been bringing it to things like Celebration and Silicon. Uh, it's an amazing BB-8. I want to hear all about it. How did this whole thing begin? Um, I think really the whole thing began when uh, we both started building BB-8s independently in 2016, so six years ago. And um, really what ended up happening is that we wanted, to, we wanted to make it more than just a robot. We wanted to capture the character. So we ended up finding each other and we developed this team that really just focused on character integrity. Um, so it's the two of us and our other team members, Matt Hobbs and Dave Ferreira, were kind of the core group that works on it. But there's a lot of people that have helped us out along the way as well. So Amazing. I mean, at this point now, the character of BB-8 has been in popular culture for, for years now. And we know that as soon as you all saw the first movie that he appeared in, people, engineers were thinking about ways to create a physical representation of BB-8, which is like, almost, an, it's, it's more than the filmmakers needed to do, right? <laughs> right, 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 yeah. Um, you come from an animation background. So character is very important for you. What, what are the characteristics of the puppeting, of the movements that were essential, more than just the balancing of, of BB-8? Well, kind of what you're seeing here, we, we never want the droid to be entirely static. We always want to have a little bit of that keep alive, make him feel like, you know, I'm looking around, I'm, I'm assessing my environment, I'm, I'm alive, I'm doing things. Uh, we wanted, we wanted our droid to feel like he had a soul, uh, so you didn't just turn it on and thought, well, okay, that's nice, but it's a robot. Um, so really getting the characteristics from the movie, like where the head is, how the head pivots, um, how he moves forward and backward, how he would react in a situation, turning, banking, all of those little details. Uh, we watched a lot of the movie over and over again to really capture that. Yeah, and I, I noticed that here, Chris, as you're operating BB-8, you're constantly, is that, that's a manual control you're doing for the head, is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, everything is uh, being puppeteered manually, but um, like Sai is saying, like it's just, you know, keep him looking around, keep him curious. Like that's, that's the number one thing for BB-8, I think, is just curiosity and so, you know, he's looking around, looking at shoes, looking at, looking at everything, taking it all in. It's such a smooth movement, it's, it's just, it feels just seamless almost, but of course it's a mechanical problem to solve. So tell me about just where did you guys start in terms of getting the movement to work and then uh, how you thought of the two components. Um, well, we originally didn't have the idea for how it worked. There were people that saw the one that was built after the first movie came out. It rolled out at Celebration Anaheim oh, yes. and everyone said, okay. So they actually made one, how, how was this made? And so most of the drive systems that you see are a single axle system. Uh, the drive hangs off of a pendulum. There's a ballast at the bottom. There's magnets in the body and that's what moves around the head, there's corresponding magnets in the head. Right, right. And casters. Yes, um, yes. So that was not our idea that we came up with. We just kind of took that to a little bit of the next level and really wanted to make sure the balancing was there um, and that everything that we did was intentional for really bringing the character to life. Yeah, and, and a lot of that I imagine is in the software, in the algorithms, because as you're running the motors, there's momentum. Like this is a ball, you have to make sure it's not just gonna fly off, even though the character does do that in the film occasionally. Um, tell me about, on the software side, what has to happen and the, the nuances and the complexities uh, for it to even like, move like a, a believable character. Yeah, um, boy, it's, it's hard to describe. Um, so certainly, uh, I, I tend to think of it in, in layers, right? Like, so there's a layer that is really um, focused on just stabilizing and, and making sure that that part was as rock solid as I could make it, and then building another layer on top of that to sort of augment it and, and add in the, the puppeteering. Um, so yeah, I mean, in, in terms of stabilization, um, you know, it's using the same thing that a lot of BB-8s use with an IMU and uh, basically using a gyroscope to sort of understand how things are moving and, and, and counterbalance, almost like a drone in some ways. Yeah. Um, and then uh, on top of that is just the whole puppeteering control scheme. And I think that's one of the things that we've been very focused on here is just everything from how we uh, use it from a human interaction uh, standpoint. Like that was part of what I studied in school as a computer scientist was human-computer interaction. So getting the input device right and make sure it, it matches the character and uh, then extend that all the way into the software so that it, it sort of all becomes an end-to-end -end system. 
and the way those layers are stacked, it's designed in a way so you're not having to worry about balance and compensation for movement. You just have to worry about where you want the head to turn and look and what direction you want BB-8 to be moving. Yeah, absolutely. But the, the fun thing is, is you, you sort of get um, a lot of a lot of motion from the stabilization, and so we kind of lean into that. So we, you know, he's rocketing a lot on his own, and I'm just giving him a little nudge here, and everything else, just by the, the virtue of how it works, lets him be the character, and so we sort of lean into that as, as much as we can. Is there a lot of tuning then also? For There's a lot of tuning. <laughs> a lot of tuning, yeah. A ton of tuning. There are, um, I think, hundreds of tunable parameters most of them we're not constantly tweaking, but they're all you know available to be tuned at any given time. And, yeah. yeah. For like different surfaces and kind of environmental profiles that you're considering. Oh yeah, yeah. There's usually a lot of assessing what sort of environment we're going to be rolling in, especially at a convention like this. And then we'll try to just roll them around, um, get a sense for things that work or don't work. We'll take it back to the room, change something. Um, bring it back the next day, drive it. Okay, what went well? What didn't go well? Um, tons of that. Constant process of iteration. Yeah, yeah. yeah kind of like you know storytelling and, and animation and, and you know filmmaking. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, also, part of the personality is the voice. Mm -hmm. like BB-8, like R2, all the droids have a distinct voice. Tell me about how this BB-8, your BB-8, uh, speaks and uses that to tell a story as well. Oh well, you. <laughs> there we go. Um, so we have two kind of main controls for audio. Um, we don't have a very specific audio soundboard, but we have a collection of sounds that we determined were like happier, like welcoming beeps, and then some that are still usable, but maybe aren't quite as like bright or bubbly as excited. And um, we kind of refer to those as sad beeps, like we've got the happy and the sad. Um, but we always try to let the droid have his own voice. So we never try to speak for the droid. We always just, if somebody comes up and asks him a question, we make sounds, and um, we really would like him to be a little bit louder. That's one thing that we're working on, uh, so that's something we're trying to tune while we're here. But probably one of the coolest audio components of BB-8 is the motor sounds, if you want to. Yeah, so that's something that, as far as I know, is, is unique to this one. Um, and I think we originally did that uh, on the version of BB-8 in uh, 2019 at Celebration uh, Chicago. Um, Star Wars Celebration, and uh, yeah, it's basically the synthesized motor sound. Oh, wow. So, you hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so um, it just adds to the character in a way that, like, otherwise he's fairly quiet, like, you wouldn't really hear it, but it helps him navigate a crowd, so that's one, one big thing. Um, but it's also, like, if you listen closely in the films, like, that is part of the, the Foley that is added in, it's just... Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like a modern electric vehicle, right? That you have to kind of add in. Stuff. Even though it's, it's a kind of a, the roaring of a motor, you guys are using brushless motors, something that you don't necessarily get that built in for free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, even things like you know, the antenna, that secondary animation, mm -hmm. right? The free free movement there, it's the cleverness of the design yeah. of it. Oh, so wonderful. Uh, and lights, of course, really mm -hmm. decked out. Um, do you feel like with the modern servos and motors and electronics available, you kind of maximize the build volume inside, or is there opportunity to iterate? Like, where where do you see this next? If this is not even the first BB-8 you guys have worked on. No, um, we've we've been we've been tweaking this one a lot, and it's funny because I think that with any project like this, we could probably work on it forever. Um, uh, we've been doing so much testing of different types of motors and different types of setups, schematics. What features do we want? What are some future features that we want? So um, we're, we are really happy with where we are now on the technology side, but as different things come out, it will be really interesting to see how we can utilize some future unknown motor or servo in this design that we haven't thought of yet. Um, yeah. Got anything to add to that one? No. <laughs> well, I, mean, so. I mean, everyone always asks if uh, if it can do the thumbs up. And, it's, uh, and soon, soon. Yeah. Oh, wow, we, okay. We have a yeah. plan for it, but it's yeah. it's hard to pack in there. Yes, <laughs> challenge accepted. The, the filmmakers, I, I feel like they're, they are they know, they're aware of the droid builders, mm -hmm. they're aware of you guys out there, and like every animation, sure, someone will figure it out. Ah, oh, yeah. yeah. I swear, <laughs> half the things that they come up with, they're like, we just want to see if someone can do this. So, yes. yeah. Yes. Awesome. Well, Sai, Chris, thank you so much. Congratulations on this amazing EBA. It's one of the best I've seen. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you so much, Norm.